Sandhill cranes are a very unique animal. They're basically flying dinosaurs. These birds have been traveling back and forth this corridor uh, long before humans were walking on the earth. I have been chasing waterfowl for over 45 years now, and when I shot my first crane, I was bit by these guys and the excitement of it. These guys are a challenge every day, and it's that challenge that brings me out every day, and I actually seen other folks like Casey and other folks that come to us. Some are completing their slams and some are just experiencing what it is to shoot dinosaurs. These birds are amazing. Until you do it, it's hard to explain it on camera. So in the past seven years or so, I've had the opportunity to hunt birds all over. And I've been asked before, you know, what's your favorite hunt? And I think it's really difficult to Take pinpoint one single hunt because Every one is presented with unique memories. Uh, you know, whether you're, you're fighting bad weather or you're just got birds by the dozens landing in the decoys, every single one provides such a unique opportunity to experience them. But so far in my journey, I would have to say, sitting here on the prairie in Southern Saskatchewan, hunting sandhill cranes with a great friend that I met through waterfowl hunting, has got to be on top of the list. This week we're in Saskatchewan hunting sandhill cranes with uh, Prairie Goose Outfitters. I've known them for about six or seven years now. Uh, I met one of the owners of Prairie Goose, Mark uh, DeRoche, uh, in pursuit of my uh, North American 41 waterfowl slam. Uh, we were both chasing it at the same time the Waterfowl Slam presents an opportunity for you to visit areas all across the country and Canada. Uh, I've completed the Slam actually, plus a few other species along the way. It didn't initially begin as something I was going to do. Actually as a young boy, um, the very first bird I ever shot was a full plumed hooded Naganzer. And the bite of the variety of waterfowl, especially ducks, bit me then. 41 different species sounds like a lot until you just one at a time you just go on one hunt at a time and make those memories and pretty soon you're at like you know 25 26 and oh I can go on another hunt and get a couple more before you know it you're pretty close to finishing it and then you start looking at the logistics of it and you start thinking okay I gotta I gotta go to Florida now to hunt ducks like that's something I never would have thought at or I gotta go to the East Coast and hunt you know common eiders and go experience hunting in Maine or Massachusetts. The slam forces you to get out of your comfort zone, out of your local marshes, and go hunt a different way. Waterfowl hunting, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And so if you can get to, you know, you go to Florida or Arkansas or Alaska and you're hunting a different way, maybe you can take that home and incorporate it into your home marshes and it'll make you more successful. You'll be able to take your kids out and teach them what you've learned along the way trying to pursue the slam. And it's an accomplishment that is chased a lot but accomplished very few times. So I found out about this hunt through my buddy, Casey Smith. Um, we both grew up in the same town, uh, Hooper, Utah, went to the same school, but we actually never even met each other. Um, only a couple years apart in school, but um, he had posted online on social media, Instagram, about a spot opening up for a hunt kind of last minute within a, within a month or so. And uh, luckily enough, my wife gave me the okay to uh, spend a little extra play money and make it up to uh, shoot some cranes. The area that we're in here now is, they call it the pothole region. There's little pockets of water all over in these prairies. We're hunting barley and wheat fields. There's some beans around as well, but it's all flat. So these birds can see for miles. This field hunting and these birds are so big and so so graceful even. Um, it kind of just puts you into a shock when you're, when you try to get your gun up, you're, you're mostly looking at how the bird's reacting and you almost don't even think about what you need to do with the shot by putting putting the bead right on their head, and it's it's kind of a kind of throws you for a loop for a little bit. Usually, multiple days go into 
one hunt. Uh, typically you won't hunt a field just spotting it and then hunting it the next feed. You'll watch it for a day or two so it builds up. Then of course when you go to hunt you got to be to the field at least an hour and a half ahead of time, sometimes two hours. Set up your decoy spread, your blinds. Waterfowl hunting is a bunch of guys together having some fun, hopefully shooting some birds. So we, we went to an A-frame setup, uh, highly grassed in blinds. I made my own stuffer decoys as well to try to up the game. These guys have some great eyesight and they are not an easy bird. You'll see on this video some excellent, excellent decoying birds and that it doesn't happen every day and it takes a lot of work to make it happen. I don't know if I've ever hunted sandhill cranes where the hunt lasted longer than the setup. More times than not, the setup is usually two or three times the length of, of the time it takes to, to hunt your birds and finish for the day. Yesterday, it was 20 birds in 25 minutes, four man limit. Today, it was 20 birds in 20 minutes. And even after the guns were down and the, the cameras started pulling out, the birds were still flying in by 20, 30 packs at a time. Those are the memories you can't buy in the store. Those are the memories that you can't recreate. You just got to get out here and experience it. After the hunt was concluded, uh, you know, the decoys are picked up, the blinds are put away, and the guns are cased. We grabbed all the birds and headed up on the hill and broke them down. There's a lovely restaurant here in town. We presented them with the meat and they cooked it up into this incredible meal. We had a teriyaki crane and chow mein and vegetables. Never would I have thought that you could prepare waterfowl like that. It was by far the most tender, most tasteful meat that I've had. Experiences like this are what motivates me and keeps me going and, and has me looking forward to the next hunt, sitting in the next blind with friends and family.